Hello everyone. When the company provide a service or sell a product, they either immediately receive the cash, which is great, or the customer will pay later. The amount the customer owes for goods and services delivered but not yet paid is referred to as accounts receivable. So it's essentially the customer making a promise to pay you the money in the future for services you already provided. Now, account receivable is an asset because it provides you future benefit. That benefit is actual cash. In this session, we will focus on understanding accounts receivable and the related accounting processes. Now, eventually, in this chapter, we will address situation where the customer fails to pay, fails to make good on that promise. Now, if all customers pay, you provide the service, they pay you the cash, all good, this will be the whole chapter. Eventually, we'll have to look at situation where the customer fails to pay, we'll deal with something called bad debt expense. Now, to effectively manage accounts receivable from the company's perspective, it's very important to track each customer's balance individually. How much they purchased from us, how much they paid so far, what's their balance, so on and so forth. We do so through something called sub-ledger or subsidiary ledger or for short sub. Now, the, to understand the sub-ledger, it's pretty straightforward. It's keeping track of each account separately for a client. Basically, maintaining the record of each client separately. And this is very important for the company. Now, eventually, in your audit course, you need to be familiar how sub-ledger works. So, although the concept is pretty straightforward, what's a sub-ledger? Please appreciate what a sub-ledger is because eventually in your auditing course, you will need to learn this as well as in your accounting information system course, how the sub-ledgers relate to the general ledger. So in this session, we will master the basics of accounts receivable, laying down the foundation for more advanced topic in this chapter. At the end, we'll work a multiple choice questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's dive immediately into the accounting aspect of accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is an asset and it's created when someone perform work. So if you perform $10,000 worth of work for a customer and they promise to pay you this amount later, what do you do? You would record 10,000 worth of an account receivable. Eventually, the customer will pay you this amount. Well, when, when, you, when you perform the work, you are going to debit accounts receivable, $10,000, it's gonna go up. And usually, like 99% of the time, when you debit account receivable, you are going to credit sales. Well, why? Because if you are, if you perform the work, you can record the sale and you, you can record the promise. Now, the reason I said 99%, because at some point, if you study intermediate accounting down the road, you are going to see that sometime we debit account receivable and we credit something else. It's for construction accounting or long-term contract. Don't worry about this now. This is financial accounting. So, 99%, let's say for you, say 100% of the time for your purpose. When you increase receivable, what you are saying is, I perform the work, I expect to be paid. I perform the work, therefore I can expect to receive the money. Eventually you would receive the money and when you receive the money, we will debit cash, cash go up, we will debit cash 10K and we will credit account receivable and now the balance is down to zero. So we perform the work, then we got paid. And this is perfect. This is what we want to do. This is the normal life of an account receivable. In the real world, you have to understand businesses maintain a separate account receivable for each customer. So in the real world, 
companies will have a general ledger account receivable, a GL of receivable, a grand total or a total amount. And what they do too, they will have a subsidiary ledger of account receivable for each client. For short, it's called sub ledger, sub AR ledger. So each customer will keep track of each customer separately. So each subsidiary account tracks the specific customer's purchases, payment, and current balance. If you have ever used a credit card, you have a similar situation. The credit card company keeps a record of all your transactions separately. Then they have the total receivable from all the customers. For example, let's assume we have two customers, TechWord, and the balance for TechWord is 2000 and we have Alpha Electronics and Alpha owes us 1500 so we have an account receivable subledger for TechWord and another one for Alpha and for the sake of simplicity our company has only two customers those two the total general ledger account receivable is 3500 why? Because when we add up all the individual customer balances, they should equal to the account receivable shown in the general ledger. So notice 2000 plus 1500 equal to 3500 and the 3500 is the general ledger balance. Now up to this point, when we talked about account receivable, we did not specify you know, account receivable sub, sub ledger. For example, account receivable tech word, account receivable alpha electronics but in the real world each customer is kept track of separately now those are the balances from the prior slide let's assume on august 5th you sell 1200 worth of goods to tech word and you collect 500 from alpha let's let's perform the journal entries you made additional sales to tech word so you're going to debit 1200 tech word and you are going to credit revenue you also collected 500 from Alpha. You're going to debit cash. Cash will go up and you are going to reduce the account receivable for Alpha. Now, the tech word balance is 3,200. The Alpha Electronics balance is 1,000. Now, again, what we have to do, we have to update the balances as well. How do we update the balance as well? We could bring the 1,200 and credit 500 cash we can do that that's one thing to do or we can compute the net change which is the net change account receivable went up 1200 account receivable went down 500 the net is 700 simply put we have to add 700 which will give us 4200 as our new general ledger which is 3,200 plus 1,000, the end in balances for tech word, which is 3,200 and 1,000 for alpha electronics. The sum of all individual subledgers equal to the total general ledger of 4,200. What we have to understand too, that some companies, for example, I'll give you one from the real world, Best Buy, they issue you store credit cards. What does that mean? It means you can buy from their store and they will finance the transaction for you. So a company like Best Buy offers store credit cards allowing customers to buy on credit directly financed by the store itself. And here's how it typically works. Now we have to understand that this credit card, very important to understand, is issued by Best Buy. And notice there's no Visa, MasterCard, American Express, there's no, no, none of these typical credit card signs on it. And this is important. Why? Because this credit card is a store credit card. It means it can only be used at Best Buy. Because we have to differentiate between store credit cards and regular credit, car, credit cards, which we'll talk about shortly. So how, how does it work when a company sells using their store credit card? So if you if they make a sale of a thousand dollar on their own credit card on their own credit card they will debit, they will debit account receivable credit revenue now bear in mind then when the company sells you on credit well guess what they are going they are financing this transaction so at the end of the period they might also accrue interest on the balance so for example for the sake of this illustration we're going to assume 15 dollars of interest was accrued just this is given how did i come up with this i just 
I'm not going to compute the interest now, make it more complicated. But what you have to do is this $1,000 of receivable, technically it's a note, but since it's called a credit card, we're going to call it accounts receivable. But technically it's a form of a note. But since we said they use the credit card, we're going to keep it as an account receivable. But the store credit cards will accrue interest because they are not going to finance the transaction for free. Therefore, Best Buy, it's not only they make a sale. Here's what you have to understand from a business perspective. In this situation, yes, Best Buy in the business of selling electronics, but also Best Buy is your banker. Best Buy is also earning interest on that transaction. So they are both. The, they're financing the transaction and they sold you the item. So they are, they are a dual role in this situation. Now let's take a look at normal credit cards. This is where you would see the Visa card sign and the MasterCard. This is credit card sales, not store. So you could use this card at Best Buy. You could use it at Walmart. You could use it at Amazon. You could use it in your local store. Anywhere that they accept the credit card, it's a credit card. So why would companies, why would merchant accept? First of all, let's talk about why would merchant accept credit cards? Why would they accept this? Well, one reason which is so obvious is to increase sales because research shows and not only research forget about the research experience shows that if you give the customer more options to buy they will buy more in other words if you give the customer the option to buy to buy on credit they will buy more from you case in point mcdonald's mcd mcdonald's the store that they sell burgers 20 years ago, or a little bit over 20 years ago, I don't remember the exact time, but based when I was <laughs> in my 20s, they would only accept cash. So if you want to go buy, buy something from McDonald's, you have cash, they will accept cash. So what did they wanted to do? They wanted to experiment accepting credit cards. So what they decided to do, what they decided to do is to accept credit card sales. And they tried it in one state. And what they, what they found out, the average sale, the average customer, or the, so the average sale before the credit card was around, don't quote me on the numbers, $3.46. After they accepted the credit card, the average sale was five plus dollar. It, in, it was a little bit over five. <laughs> what does that mean? It means give the customer the chance to pay in a credit card and your sale will increase almost double. Not double, but you know, five something. It increased substantially. <laughs> what did McDonald's do? They implemented accepting credit card in older stores. What did Burger King do? Follow suit. What did Wendy's do? They all follow suit because <laughs> you cannot compete if your competitors are choosing this alternative method. Now, that's one thing. You increase your sales, I would say it's obvious, but I have to mention it. But the most important thing when you accept a credit card is you transfer the risk of default. And this is what, this is what we'll be discussing in the next session, the default or the collection risk. What happened is this, when you pay using a credit card, the bank issuing the credit card will make the payment to the merchant. So the merchant guaranteeing the money. The merchant is saying, I'm going to get my money guaranteed. Now, is there a cost for that? You Sure, there is a cost because they're transferring the risk. You can collect the money and you reduce your overhead costs. You know, if you don't have to have to collect the money, you don't need a department to collect your money. You don't need to have a collection agency. There's so many different things that you can save by not having a collection effort. So that's the reasons why companies accept credit cards. So let's take a look at a transaction, okay? So now here we're using either a Visa or a MasterCard. What I meant by Visa and a MasterCard, they're accepted everywhere. Where the bank issuing that credit card fronts the payment but charge a processing fee. Now the bank makes the payment immediately to the merchant. So how does it work? Let's assume on July 15th, a $100 sale on a bank credit card with a 4% fee would be recorded as follows. So a merchant make a sale, they sold something for $100, there's a 4% credit card fee. And that's why in some places, they don't accept credit card if the amount is, for example, less than $10. Why? Because there's a fee. And if you pay them through a credit card, the credit card company will eat their profit. 
So let's assume the profit for this year. Let's assume that's most likely not the case. Let's assume the profit is 4% and the credit card company is going to charge them 4%. Then, then there's no reason to make a sale because they will not make a profit. So that's why they require a minimum. But for the sake of this example, $100 sale, 4% fee. So the merchant made a $100 sale. They would receive only 96% of the proceeds, which is $96. The sale itself is $100 then they are charged a $4 fee. So the merchant would receive $96 in cash. So cash will go up. Expenses will go up another debit, debit cash, debit expenses, and credit sales revenue for the 100. But the net sales is 100 minus four. The net sales is $96. Now, why did the merchant pay $4? Because they wanted to get $96. They're okay with this because from the $96, they, they still have a profit or the assumption is they have a profit. So this is how bank credit cards work. And when I was an accountant, I told you about McDonald's, but maybe I should tell you another story that um, I had a client and I, and I recruited that client. It was um, a relative of mine. They had a deli. And what they did they did not accept credit cards. So I told them, look, go ahead, have an experiment for a month and a half. If you don't like it, discontinue it. Also, they find out that their sales increased substantially. So accepting credit cards will increase your sales as a merchant. No if and buts about it. More payment options. And psychologically, if you're paying with a credit card, you don't see the money, you're not emotionally attached to it. Those are reasons why credit card sales are important are important and there's something called sales on installment what is sales on installment it's you make a sale and you will make uh, and the customer will pay you and will make payment so inv involve agreeing on a periodic payment over an extended period of time often including interest and usually when you say sales on installment we're dealing with notes receivable, which will have a whole session about this. Just wait on that. But it's a form of receivable. And this is common for large purchases. If you want to buy a car or a piece of furniture, they will make you make payments. And that payment would include interest. As the payments are made, both principal and interest revenue are recorded, reflecting the periodic income earned from financing agreement. So when you are involved in a, in a sales on installment or installment sales, you are making payment. Part of this payment, you have to understand, each payment, part of it is interest. Interest, it means interest revenue. And the other part is principal, the original amount. So you're paying for the merchandise and you're paying interest. And why did the, why did the merchant agree to do that? Because they are making a profit on your money. Now, what we did in this session is we set the ground. We set the ground for a receivable, account receivable, notes receivable, like sales on installment. It doesn't matter. So we needed to understand what is a receivable. That's all. Now, receivables are great, but in the next session, we're going to start to introduce the problem of receivable, which is not collecting the money. And this is a risk when you have a receivable. But before we jump into that that issue of receivable, let's take a look at a multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. On August 10th, a business accept a bank credit card sale for $500. The bank charge 3% 3, 3 processing fee. What's the correct entry? Before we look at the answer choices, you should have sales should be how much? S sales should be 500. Now look for sales revenue with 500. Sales revenue 500. I don't see any sales revenue here. I'll take it out. Uh, sales revenue 500 I keep debits de debit sales revenue I, I take this one out so it's between A and C so I'm gonna credit sales revenue 500 credit sales revenue 500 debit cash 500 am I receiving cash 500 no I'm receiving less than 500 how much am I receiving I am receiving 500 times 0.97 or 97 of my sale why 97 because 3% goes to the credit card, the bank credit card, uh, the, the bank issuing the credit card. So 500 times 0 0.97 is $485. I debit cash 485. I have a $15 credit card expense. Another way to compute this credit card expense is taking 500 times 3%. This is the fee of 15 
dollars. So the entry is C as in Charlie. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs to help you, whether you are an accounting student, CPA, CMA candidate, invest in yourself, invest in your accounting education. Accounting is worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.